Why, hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another Tuesday live stream artist chat where we, what, we connect and we talk to a member of our creative community who is making art, but also creating positive change wherever they might be in the world. Um, so great to have you here. My name is Mary Cronert and I'm here on behalf of the Living Room Community Art Studio. Uh, this is one of the most awesome times of the week for me because I just get to hang out with another creative person and learn about who they are and well, perhaps we might even inspire one another. You never know. Today's guest is someone that I've been, I had been longing to meet for a long, long time. Not a member of a direct Oshawa community, but someone, uh, an artist who was a part of our global community, who through this kind of virtual art high work, I had the opportunity to finally connect with. And this person is an astonishing creator in so many ways. Um, let's see, filmmaker, visual artist, illustrator, uh, arts organization founder, child youth worker, storyteller. How many other things? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, but I'm so, so, so happy to introduce you today to Prin Marshall, a UK-based artist who is doing extraordinary things where they're at. But I'm going to stop talking and why don't we bring Prin on so she can tell us a little bit about who she is, what she does, and why art matters for her. <laughs> Let's do this. It's Prin Marshall. Mm. Tea. Tea is good. Especially on a snowy, snowy day like the one we're having in Oshawa today. All right. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Shall I create soundtrack music for you folks? No? No? Is that too much? I don't want to alienate anyone right off the top. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thanks so much <laughs> for joining us today. We're waiting. Let's see what's happening. Sometimes there can be technical glitches. Sometimes, of course, we don't know what's happening with the World Wide Web. <gasps> Hello, everyone. Wow. Wow. So lovely to see you all here today. I'm not sure where you folks are at, but here in Oshawa, we've had about a foot of snow overnight. So uh, I'm wondering if a lot of folks are snowbound at home today, just doing what they got to do. Let's see. You know what, Prin? I am going to cancel and I'm going to invite you. Let's see if that works a little more smoothly. All right. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to look. Now let's see how can I do this here. Can I do this? Yes. I'm going to try that. Now you're getting the inside, the internal monologue that we're having here today. So let's try this and see. Oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> yay! Hey, Mary. Oh, <laughs> technology. I know, I know. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Prin. I know it's a lot. That's all right. Where you're at. How are you doing today? <laughs> all right, a bit tired, but I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm, I've been looking forward to uh, our chat, to be honest. It's nice uh, defrag. Yeah, yeah. Have I got my cup of tea here. If folks, if you're out there, if you want to put the camera yeah, on. Drink. Yeah, let's relax a little bit. Yeah, got a bit of wine. I, I'm like, after we, you know, spoiler alert for folks out there. I try to interview or connect with each artist before we do this uh, online. It was so, God, uh, it was just so great to finally meet you and lay eyes on you because I've heard so much about you through other folks in the community. And yeah, Carlos, there's Carlos from Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> it was, uh, you've become kind of been, you've been built up in my mind over time. Oh. And it was so good to meet you and realize that all of that was, you are a fantastic human being. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes hard to hear, but I'm going to just keep saying, I'm just going to keep throwing that your way. Um, it is, it is. So for folks who might not be familiar with you or who haven't heard all the wonderful things that I've heard, how would you describe yourself as an artist <laughs> out there in the world? <laughs> uh, I'm Prin. Uh, I'm, well, an artist. And that's it as well, isn't it? It's like an artist. Like I've got friends for me who are like artists. Like it's their bread and butter. Like without that, <laughs> they don't have anything. Um, so I say I'm sort of like part-time because uh, like you said, I'm a youth worker um and i do art on the side to get a bit of extra money in so i do a bit of that and um yeah i run an event uh called battle lines like a live art battle event um yeah 
<laughs> and so I suppose I'm a part-time artist, not full-time. Okay. All right. I would, that's, I love how we feel like we have to like qualify those things when we say them, like I'm an artist, but only this much, only this. Yeah. It, I think if you're an artist, you're an artist. You may not get to do it all the time. And I, I think one of the things I love about you is because uh, I remember a teacher once long, kind of when I was young and just a bit dumb. Well, maybe. Anyways, <laughs> I should be kind to of myself. Uh, they just reminded me that the arts is not a narrow path. It's not like you just sign up to one thing and do that mm -hmm. one the rest of your life. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I think it's exciting to meet creators like you who are diversifying what they do, passionate about many things, because undoubtedly, I, well, you know what, I'll ask you, how does the child youth work you do, how do all the other things you do feed into your art? And vice versa. Um, yeah, I think uh, it worked out that I, I finished uni, um obviously i studied film but um i don't art in that like it's like i don't know what your qualifications are over there but like gcse a level went to college done oh, art in, that in, sort of thing we have like bachelors of art and things like degrees and different things i'm yeah yeah but um so uh, yeah i left that um i ended up working at a homeless hostel for about a few years and then um i started working um at an organization with um young people who've been like excluded from mainstream school um so there they're like you know what skills do you have i was like well what, you know i draw and stuff <laughs> and uh, i ended up being the arts worker running art sessions with um all these young people with challenging behavior um mm. and uh yeah got into it that way so when i went on to work for like the local authority um that's it i, I was doing lots of um art workshops filmmaking workshops um as part of my youth work so yeah they sort of joined in and worked out quite well really <laughs> yeah. I find that that's I feel like everything else everything every little thing we do feeds into it some way or another yeah. um, and I think Carlos was also there gently challenging you about that you're a full he's I think he said you're a full-time artist you are a full-time artist and oh, <laughs> yeah and he also mentioned one of the best youth workers he knows so that's uh oh Carlos mate <laughs> I could say the same about him though like you know I think anyone who's in, in, whether it's youth work, mm -hmm. social work, community workers, anyone on that grassroots community level, whether you're, you know, like got an organisation and you've applied for funding for three years, just to start something in your community, like mm -hmm. uh, anyone, like we're all, they're all good people. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got something in you that makes you want to do that. It doesn't matter whether you're up late at night or you start work late and you know you have a youth club until like you get home at like half 10 at night it, it really it doesn't matter so I think um like attracts like yeah I and I think the arts part of it I always found it really interesting in the work that I did with youth too the the idea of like challenge youth challenging youth youth who are yeah, all the, yeah it's like <sighs> such <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's not you know like I I work with young people who are we all know about the education system we've all been through it you know we have the things we don't like and like about being in education and um just how school is now like you've got 30 kids in a classroom and they've all got different learning skills you know you've got kinesthetic visual practical i know i'm missing the other one but you know like not every single kid in that lesson is going to sit there and absorb the information going in um you know and the teachers don't have the capacity to be focusing on those kids um so they play up and they act up because they're not being stimulated enough it, you know the academic system isn't to their liking you know <laughs> i i always love that term when i love that's sarcasm but when i hear that term i also wonder like challenging to whom who yeah. like it, it's not you know this yeah it's always a really interesting thing to investigate and question when i see that coming yep. across yeah, yeah. Uh, and the voice of resistance is a really healthy one yeah, yeah. Too but, right. It always is. Um, okay. In a, way. Hmm? in a healthy way, resisting. Yeah. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't have to be healthy resisting. You know, sometimes you have to like kick and scream a bit and <laughs> you know. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I want to come back to this again. Um, but can we 
sort of rewind a little bit and talk about um, before this. Let's say, how about this? When did you first know that you were an artist? Um, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, when my mum started buying me more pencils and art pads and things you know like we i didn't you know i don't my, my background's like you know i was you know it's that sort of thing of being brought up on benefits and you didn't have much growing up so i knew when my mom started buying me like pencils and pens and like art pads and that i was like right okay and she would you know she would tell me to keep going you know and just leave me to sit sit and draw and i thought okay i've got something here then you go to school and then um you know your, your grades are okay but then you end up getting like A's, you know, and I'm thinking, right, this is the only subject that I'm getting A's in, <laughs> so I'm going to keep going with it, you know, and I had good teachers as well, I had good art teachers and teachers growing up who, um, you know, fed that, so yeah, for when my mum actually, you know, cut her budget of food to get me a sketch pad or a set of pencils or something. Wow, the love there, just recognising, yeah. oh, oh, lovely. <laughs> and I guess it's a difficult question to ask too, this idea of service. When did you realize that your art could be, because it sounds like the artwork you do and how you integrate it into the, your youth work as well. It's a path of service as well. Like when did, mm. when did those two first come together for you? Um, I don't know. Uh, I remember doing my first like uh, live art jam uh when i came back from university and i came back to peterborough mm -hmm. and um my mate uh stuart um he said like print like you do this art jam and i was like cool it's first live piece i'd done and then um, you just had people sort of coming up to you and saying oh you know you, you worked with my son you worked with my son at school and you know, he loves your art lessons it's the only thing he does now and i was like oh okay <laughs> that's that's sort of cool I'm, I'm hitting young people and and that's it when you when you're in these like um, establishments in schools and things like that and you got a, a teacher saying oh my god like that's the first time we've seen him sit down and do a piece of art ever and it's uh, your lesson is a lesson that he or she sits in um, and focuses on and produces something for the whole day and they don't hear a peep out of them you know um, same with film projects you know oh I didn't know he could work a video camera I didn't know he could he could edit a bit of film it's like well yeah <laughs> so that's when I, I realized that that's it those skills that I have and how you can uh, I suppose teach it um, just give someone a bit of time you know nothing's wrong like that's cool mate keep going um, that sort of thing I realized that actually yeah like just arts and being expressive and yeah, for, for young people, like they, they just need a bit of nurturing and someone to give them a bit of attention to tell them it's all right, you know, rather than going, oh, that's wrong, rub it out. Oh, yeah. you know, it's like, you made a mistake, let's see what we can do with that, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's my service. That's when I realised from getting feedback from whether it's parents, teachers, even, you know, kids stopping me in town and going, taking out a little, <laughs> folding up bit of paper and going, look what I did. I'm like, yes, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> but yeah and I, I i think one of the things i love about that too and just the, like from uh hearing you tell that story is that there's overlap it's again it's not a narrow path it's not like one thing yeah. you you know it is about community it's about things that you're sharing or witnessing spreading out and just yeah growing forward you know mm. when you're not there mm. that's a little bit like you're paying forward what your mom gave to you yeah yeah she um she's always been supportive she's always sort of um i'm an only child so i don't have any siblings or anything mm -hmm. um i've got cousins and that who you hung around with and played out with but um i was always sort of on my own and enjoyed my own company and uh uh yeah she just saw that that was something that i i liked doing and obviously kept me a bit quiet <laughs> you know it kept me out of her hair for a bit um, and i always enjoyed it and when when you're going through stuff like it um from growing up uh, you know things you go through you experience you witness whatever um mm. to your teen teenage years e everyone everyone your teenage years like you know it could be cool but there's always something there's a there's something there and um you know that's where all your teenage angst and everything comes from but um mm. yeah if I didn't have that drawing 
growing up, then I don't, I don't know. And that's what most of my artwork is now. Like some things you can't vocalise or you don't want to share with someone and it's your own sort of thing. And I'm just really lucky I, I can pick up a pen or, and, and, and draw it out. Mm. That's such, that's the one thing I hope anyone takes from anything that yeah. here is that you can use. You don't need to have, you don't need to go to school for it necessarily. You don't need, no. to, you know, just trust those instincts and find the ways of, yeah, letting it out, letting it be seen and heard, especially and when, it, when sorry. You, no, no. When did you, um, when I look at your work and just think like considering that, like I'm picturing you in my, in my mind, you know, young person growing up using art to get through stuff, to process stuff, to communicate stuff. Um, were there any influences for you? Were, like, was there anything that sort of led in through other art forms or culturally or anything that kind of helped shape who you are and what you do? Um, uh <laughs> I draw really dark stuff. I always draw, I always draw really dark stuff. Um, I used to read loads of books as well when I was younger. So um, yeah, you go to the library and read stuff and mum would be like, you know, what have you been reading today? And I'd be like, oh, Nightmares and Dreamscapes from Stephen King. And mum would be like, bloody hell, like, you know, like horror film, like horror books and stuff. So uh, that was a channel for my, but I, ne I never, I never really saw like darker sort of artwork until I came across H.R. Geiger or Giger book however you want to pronounce it um yeah. in the library and um, i opened that up and i was just like whoa oh my god like this this is it sort of thing i was like this dude that's really dark phallic you know biomechanical boobs and like, i was like yes <laughs> um so like geiger like artists um especially geiger and um you, you start looking yeah you start looking at just different artists and things um uh i don't know um I like Aubrey Beardsley. His stuff's really cool. Um, yeah, it's just what you find. You know, um, Egon Sheila, Egon Shell. Um, when I started drawing characters, you know, like people be like, oh, you, you do really long necks or your your proportions are really long. Um, I remember um, a friend uh, saying to me, no, sorry, it wasn't mate. Um, it was my art teacher. She gave me the Egon Sheila book. And then um, she said, you know, have a look at this. And I saw his figures and I was like, right, there's someone else who does stuff similar to me. And this dude was around in like, I don't know, 18, whatever, <laughs> that sort of thing. And you just pick it up along the way. And then it's like, right, I, I've got somewhere, but um, I'm not quite sure where I'm going. But, you know, just loads of artists who like, um, yeah, just pick up on stuff and realise that, um, you know, you do belong somewhere. Mm. I love that. I think people get scared of uh, dark art. I don't know how to describe it really, because for me, it's just all art. There's no kind of yeah light art. There's no, you know, it's just art. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do think people, <laughs> well, especially in some of the worlds we move in, like if, for example, in the art therapy world, if you're working with people who aren't familiar with, you know, dark, you know, art therapy, or, I think the average person might get freaked out when they see yeah. something. And it's, and it's not, I think it's easy to point fingers at the artist, but if, for me, it's always been, well, let's say like that's speaking to something that you have within yourself that maybe you need to turn to, maybe like talk to that, like dialogue mm -hmm. for a little bit. Yeah. Because I know very little, like there's not much out, art out there that is scary in the sense of, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's easy sometimes to look at the artist and point a finger at the artist when really we should be looking at ourselves. Dark art for me or any kind of, you know, when you're like those artists you're referencing, yeah, there's monstrous stuff in there. There is yeah. profoundly disturbing, you know, themes running through. Out something. there, it, it's not, it's not, it's not filtered, you know? Yeah. It's right there, you know, like Egon Shell stuff, you know, it's like, whoa, you know, the young, yeah. the young females that he had, you know, as, as his like, life drawing, I was like, dude, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's out there. They were not afraid, there's no filter, you know, and, they have uh, to get it out. And I, I think it's, you know, maybe like it should be disturbing, right? Like maybe, yeah. and maybe that we need to be disturbed because I think life is disturbing mm. and we don't see any of that reflected in the voices around us. What, what happens to us then? We end up, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think uh, with my like artwork and stuff I do, that's it. I, I sort of, uh, rather than like in the past I've tried to like uh, run away 
from all that dark stuff, mm. you know, and it's always there. It doesn't matter if you have, well, for me personally, it doesn't matter whether it's like counselling or going to someone to help you to process it. Yeah, yeah. I've processed it. I, I'm aware of it. I know how to manage it. It's still there. <laughs> so I've, I've learned to like embrace it, yeah. flip it. And that's my artwork, basically. Um, and that's that's a that was it like cathartic sort of processing your own processing of things that still like haunt you, you know. And it's when I look at your artwork too, it's never uh, I don't feel disturbed when I look at your artwork. Not in the same way as some of the like previous artists in the past historically who perhaps didn't try to understand where those impulses were coming from. I feel. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I think there's an underlying, Carlos is underlining some of the things we're talking about with Big Strong. It's okay. I see. <laughs> That's trying to look. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, this sense of there's darkness in your work, but I also find whimsy. And I find there's a kind of humor that runs through it as well. Yeah. That Do you feel that's accurate? Yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know again personally speaking because people you know go through different levels of things but you have to laugh at some of it sometimes or think you know what like you know um whether it's a person an experience or something you've been through it's like you know what it's that sort of laugh at like last laugh sort yeah. of thing like you know what like, yeah that's why my like characters like um especially with like the women you know that they're they're armed with something you know it's like what have you got <laughs> Do, throw it at me. <laughs> do you have examples there that you could kind of hold up in front of the camera for a second? Uh, yeah, um, how are you for, um, I've got a lot of, I show a lot of boobs and things. Um, so, uh, for anyone who may not want to see boobs. That's you, right. You, know? you, get the, you get the idea. You get the idea. <laughs> you can show it, I think. Uh, I've got boobs. Right. Uh, let's that see. one. There. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. You don't have to hide anything, Prince. You sure? Yeah. Right. Uh, Discla disclaimer, people. Sorry. Gosh, it's gorgeous. There you go. <sighs> and you know, she's got like a uh, like fingers of <laughs> like all your like sort of enemies. Like a lot of my um, a lot of my characters have like whether it's like fingers or bones of enemies or little beasts and things they've conquered. They've got like earrings with like the bones of what they've sacrificed or killed. Uh, that sort of thing, or like. Um, you know, like the 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 breastplate of something like some monster they've killed oh. that's that's a that's a whip in work in progress but yeah things like that yeah they're using it as their armor so they've they've you know sacri they've they've slayed whatever challenge they've just had and they're, they're wearing it as like a, a form of pride like a you know an armor like you know what have you got what, what you got next <laughs> i can take I, it <laughs> hi carlos carlos says holy crap that's beautiful <laughs> love the colors that's a powerful thing. Oh yeah. Yes, are... uh, all all not really planned, by the way. Like I, I have sketch pads and stuff with things in them, but um I'm, I'm never one I'm not one of those artists who do like a final uh sort of piece, you know, like um I draw something out and then um I'll do it on like I've I've started to do stuff on layout paper. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna start doing, my actual prints, rather than finalising them to like a really nice print, I'm gonna actually do my print so the layout paper the layout sketch is underneath so like that beautiful you know you can see like the layout where i've sketched over it to finalize it yeah and then um, i sometimes keep going so i can start adding bits of layout <laughs> to make it a bit longer and piece it together but i've realized that's an element of my artwork and all my final prints and you know your edition of 10 or 15 prints it's going to have all that on it and it's going to have all the sketched ideas and things like that all over it so people see my process rather than hiding that process i'm gonna you know if people get my work and they're into it that's what they're going to get really because you're going to see how my brain's working as i create the piece i love it but you're getting a lot of love right now from folks in the comments too. am i <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i've got loads of pieces like that and they've all got yeah bits of armor and things from past battles and challenges and things that they've um yeah, they've done that come across we need that i feel yeah it's like making meaning we all have it yeah we all have it everyone walks around with your bit of armor 
it, it's on you every single day you just don't see it you know you have to get up and and go through whatever you need to go through for your day and things in your life whether they're whether you've got closure on them or you don't or things that come up it's with you like it's part of you don't don't hide it you have to find a way to em embrace it because you are here today and you've gone past it mm. you know you're still here yeah yeah, yeah. sorry i've gone off on one <laughs> no please continue going off this is and it's really selfish of me to say but i love like this is my favorite one of my favorite times of the week to learn from artists like you these things and to have certain things affirmed right yeah. there and i think especially during these times to be reminded of that that yeah the darkness is not you know we can't ignore it we can't pretend it's not there and the difficult mm -hmm. each and every one of us is going through some more than others yeah like right. to be able to make meaning of those and not only make meaning of those but to remind ourselves of the warrior natures that each one of us has the battles that we go through the scars we might carry forward those are beautiful things if we can mm. you know um, it's hard it's really hard and you know friends um, over the past, yeah, since lockdown and whatever, like, um, I've, I've got mates, it, it, that's it, everyone's just pulling out. When your energy is so low as well and you need to keep going, it's really hard. Um, but give, give uh, it's just about giving yourself some sort, sort of outlet. And obviously, you know, with me, it'll be artwork. Or, you know, I've got friends where it's music um, that they listen to, uh, reading a book, you know, but some sometimes you don't. Like I've had days throughout lockdown and whatever where I, I've gotten up and I'm just like, screw it, I I cannot be bothered with today. I, what, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what am I going to do? I don't want to paint. I don't want to draw. I haven't done that since lockdown, to be honest. Um, I I haven't done much anything. I'm just re looking at all this stuff that I I think I sort of need to do, and it's in my face, and it's like I, I just can't approach it at the moment. I've got other things to sort of deal with. You know, but it's there. Yeah. I haven't sketched anything. I haven't done anything, to be honest. You know, people think, you know, that's the thing about Insta um, social media as well. You know, I posted like a, a piece that I'd done like, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. And you post it and people are like, oh, well, oh, it's new work. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's not actually. It's like, hmm. you know, that's something I've been battling with for the past like 10 months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like the valid i don't like the instant validation and the um uh that thing social media is wicked like it's cool but um a lot of my creative mates and um, the conversations i've had with some of them um it, it's really detrimental and um I, I don't feel it too much but at the same time it's good you know like there's benefits you know there's pros and cons to everything isn't there but it's, it's a tool i have to remind yeah. myself Daily. It's a tool. It shouldn't be something that manages my life. It should be something that I use to connect and create, but on my own terms. It's. But you're right. Like Instagram, there's some. So I wish we could read every single comment. Everyone, I, know, I wish I've seen them. I wish you were all in the space with us to have this conversation. <laughs> um. It, yeah, the social media, the sort of lies that social media can perpetuate, the illusion, maybe not lies, but the illusion that everything's fine, everything's happy. Yeah. You know productive and doing beautiful amazing things and mm. um everything it's uh just do what you want to do and do it in your own bloody time do you know what i mean <laughs> don't let anyone pressure you or feel you need to post something because you've seen someone who's posted something because oh you know don't, to stop from I, I found i've learned to stop from looking at other people and just get on with my own stuff because I, I used to do that and um it's not good because you it's, it's like comparing it's like comparing um uh trauma mm. someone something someone's been through and it's like oh you've been through that well i've been through this it's like actually that traumatic experience whatever that person's been through they're there they've felt what you're feeling it's different but it's the same thing like sort of you know re respect it and don't don't um compare or you know make make people feel that they're not as adequate i don't know yeah but there's sort of thoughts i was getting about stuff so um, I, I really stopped looking at all that but at the same time it's, it's a bit of a monster because you know say with um battle lines and stuff you have to keep posting things to keep people interested and to you know keep that interest for your yeah you know, your event it's, it's hard <laughs>
Well, maybe we can, I mean, if you, if you want to, like for folks who may not be familiar with Battle Lines, can you tell us a little bit about what that organization is? Um, uh, yeah. Um, it, okay, so um, when I moved away and went to uni, um, there's another event that was happening, um, brilliant live art battles. Um, those guys are on it. Um, used to go to like London, uh, Nottingham, Birmingham, like other towns to go and see these art battles. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I came back to Peterborough and uh, I realised that we, we needed something. I was tired of going to other places to see something. Um, I wanted it on my doorstep. So me being me, I was like, oh, I'm going to start uh, an <laughs> art battle event. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, um, I started it. It's basically, um, uh, you have two artists um, they go head to head. They've got an hour and a half to produce an illustration. Um, at the end of the hour and a half, um, the crowd vote the winner. And um, yeah, they they get some goodies. But the thing with Battle Lines, um, me and my mates, um, I've got a lot of friends who supported me with it. And when we first started out, um, it was this whole like decibel, like crowd voter thing. So the louder the, louder the crowd were, the person won, but then it became a popularity competition. I didn't like that. It wasn't about that for battle lines. Um, yeah. So um, it just came down to voting with like poker chips. I don't know if you've got any kicking about, but you'd put the poker chips in like the pint glass next to the artist and you vote that way. Um, yeah, person wins and everyone just has a party because um, both artists will get goodies. So um, I'm sponsored by Posca Pens and um, a sketch pad company, Art Gecko, um, and, but before that it was just Posca, um, and Posca would just send me loads of marker pens so the artists would just get like, you know, 30 quid's worth of Posca pens because they're quite expensive. That's um, awesome. And that's it. Everyone won. No one, you know, obviously someone would lose and someone would get like <laughs> less votes than the other person, but that didn't matter. It was just about the artists in that environment, showing everyone what they've got and um, everyone just celebrating both of them. But, you know, you need that sort of competition element to keep people engaged <laughs> what i love about that is uh it's it reminds me of spoken word culture and the kind yeah. of influences of, of hip-hop and performance and yeah. competition but it's friendly there's a sense of like using that comp- leveraging that competition to boost one another up so yeah uh yeah i think there's something really beautiful there it can be yeah, rather than people you know going away and someone feeling really disheartened it's their first sort of like live battle and they're like oh i'm really uh sorry i was gonna swear then um i'm really rubbish do you know what i mean it's like no because if that was me because i've done live stuff before and i hate that i hated feeling like that like you know i'm doing a live art piece next to some graffiti artists who everyone knows and you know you're on the side and everyone's like who's that you know i, I didn't i didn't like it I, I never liked that so that was my change in the formula for an art battle because no art battle so um, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, but no art battle had done that where both people, there's a loser, but mm-hmm. both artists win, you know, because both artists get um, that, you know, I've got, I have a lot of artists going, oh my God, thanks Print, it's the first live battle I, I know I've done, um, this is amazing, I'm going to go and do some more, I'm going to do a graffiti jam in the summer, that sort of thing, or, um, especially over lockdown, because um, I've done it, um, I've changed it to Instagram, um, and a lot of artists, again, saying, you know what, I haven't drawn anything since whenever in lockdown. That's the first live piece I've done. Thanks so much because it's, you know, stoked my fire and, the, you know, it's helped them to start their artwork again, you know. So, um, pretty cool. But yeah, hip hop culture, big part of it. Um, uh, like DIY, sort of like growing up, um, growing up in Peterborough. <laughs> um, a lot of my mates uh, are part of like the punk scene, so it's that proper do-it-yourself punk scene. If, if we want a gig, we're going to have a gig. <laughs> we're going to book the bands. I was hoping you were going to bring up punk culture. I was hoping. Yeah, oh, yeah. but you see, um, yeah. that's it. Like I grew up with all that, and like all my mates, you know, organising the punk gigs. They still do. They still didn't like. Well, obviously not now, but you know, they're still this. Everyone's still around. Um, and you go to these gigs, um, and it's that whole unity peaceful sort of vibe everyone's got everyone's back you know um being a black female mm-hmm. you know i was a black person in punk gigs for time mm-hmm. <laughs> i think there was another friend uh, polly polly used to she was very really, like black girl i recognized at gigs but you know you, you can pick you you can pick the brown person out do you know what i mean <laughs> but um, you, you felt it was inclusive and as i got older i started going to like hip-hop um 
jams and gigs and stuff and um, a lot of friends who are like hip hop artists and stuff X is on there X is pain check him out is yeah. right. um you uh it's the same sort of thing punk mm. and like hip hop like underground not the mainstream but obviously it grows from that but um, they're, they're the same thing it's all about um that's it unity being part of a community a belonging um the words the lyrics you know it's all like you know and the establishment fight like the power you know yeah. that sort of stuff and th those two they're my influences they they've melted together and um that they're the same language but it's just a different form you know and it, well that's it exactly using creative like creativity as that to voice that resistance to create rupture where there needs where rupture needs to occur for new things yeah. new platforms new new everything new voices new spaces new faces everything mm -hmm. without those voices of rupture without that yeah yeah so, um, i don't want to imagine a world without that i no no exactly um and that's it with battle lines i i i, I wanted something and I, I did it and i had all those creative people around me who are doing their own thing and representing their own thing and i thought you know what, I'm, I'm i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it and see where it goes and that's it what well, it's, it's the fourth year this year <laughs> i was like wow <laughs> yeah and, and alongside that you have like artists and now started to bring in like um that's it like poets um yeah, friends like MCing, uh, all of it, break dancers, and it all comes together, you know, because it's, it's all, yeah, it's all the same, but not, but yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so amongst all the other things, you've also, I, it's kind of the way I, I feel with myself with the living room sometimes. I feel like uh, artists, we do things, but I don't think I ever envisioned myself becoming like an accidental charity founder or business runner like yeah. that never a part of my plan right yeah uh, how are you doing with that these days what is it like to manage um, i uh i sort of i'm i'm quite a uh i'm quite a shy sort of person like i don't really um uh, uh I, i'm sociable but other than that when i'm out and people see me out i'm a very quiet sort of like hermit type person <laughs> and um you don't realize the impact what you're doing has until someone says to you oh you know Bryn oh my god like I thought you uh, talked to someone about you the other day and do you realize this this and this and I'm just like what and it's, it's too much um because you're not expecting people that like we're on about compliments right and people saying oh you know where it's someone's like oh you're a legend it's like what no <laughs> <laughs> you don't I I don't like to because I think if you pay too much attention to things like that then you're just going to get that's where um, people can get a bit pretentious and egos can come in and I'm not like that. I just like to get on with stuff and um, see what happens. But it's nice to hear what other people have to say. Um, I do feel like I've bred a bit of a monster, but it's a good monster. <laughs> um, and the thing is, um, another thing is people think that um, Battle Lines is like five other people running it and it's just me from this room sitting at night, just jotting down ideas and going, right, I'm going to go with that. There's no one to go, oh, print, don't do it. Or, you know, oh, don't think you should do that print. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I, I just I just do it. But yeah, a lot of people think it's it's more people. And then they realise that it's me. And like, oh, it's you. So yeah. And to be honest, um, you're a black woman in in a world, whether it's, um, whether it's male dominated um, mm -hmm. as well, you know? You, it's, it's, that's my sort of take on it and I think people are quite surprised when um you say like uh, they're like oh battle lines you know who runs it and I'm like it's me and they're like oh <laughs> there's there's two big themes that jumped out for me there the sense yeah. of grassroots organizations doing amazing amazing work in the community and I think yeah people don't they're not always aware that it's one person they they think because you're making it look easy you're making it look effortless you're making it it's amazing to oh, be wow <laughs> But it's always worth checking in a little bit. You know, yeah. if you're out there and you're interested, always check in because there are, I don't know if you experience this, like it's a similar thing with the living room. It's just, you know, it's, just, it's like me most days. So yeah. email, it's nothing personal. It's just because I have other emails before I get to that one. Yeah, yeah. So I am like, again, but I do want to shower you. I'm going to like shower a lot of just loveliness on you there. <laughs> Cheers. Because <laughs> And because I can relate and I, and I really honor that too, that, that cautious, um, 
the, the sort of cautious acceptance of compliments and not allowing it to, uh, I get that. I get the not mm -hmm. wanting to put your head because I think it can get in the way of other things getting into our heads if we welcome that into our head. But you are doing amazing work. You are doing amazing yes. work. Thank you. That's really, that's really cool. Like to, yeah, that's really cool. Like how, how did you, how did you, well, that's it with living room and stuff. Mm -hmm. Was, was it just one of those days like which like, I'm going to do this and then oh, you do it. Yeah. And then, yeah it was and i can relate to the monster piece as well it's like oh my gosh what is what oh no oh no this is a thing now i feel yeah. like a thing and it's always remembering okay there are other it's not just me there are other folks but yeah it was one day i was at i was at my joe job and i saw a post online i was trying to be an art therapist and mm. and i am an art therapist but i'm mm. uh but i'm not i hate the system it's a part of Apologies to all other wonderful, beautiful art therapists out there doing amazing, extraordinary work. <laughs> I get that, though. I see what you're saying, yeah. Um, and I was so much an artist by that time that I just didn't fit in to those mm. worlds. Um, but I was, there was, a, I think with artists and, you know, mm. I, it's interesting, like, it would be interesting to know if you also had this. There's always a part of my brain that's seeking, always seeking, yeah. the, always on the lookout for that, whatever that thing is, always listening yeah was observing not you know processing as quickly as I'd want to yeah. uh, there's always this part of me that wants to be on the growing edge and because that's where I'm most excited that's where I'm happiest um yeah and yeah. sometimes gets me into trouble because uh I want to say yes <laughs> say yes to every and every idea is a great idea um until it's not <laughs> until I'm exhausted then it's 5 a.m yeah. Why am I? Why did I say yes to this? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what that is. I don't. I don't know what it is. I don't know where. Um, for for me, like I, uh, I don't know if it's with you as well, Mary, because you 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 do a lot of stuff as well. Like at, you've been an actress and things like that, haven't you? Like you you're still like multifaceted in what you do. I try. Yeah. Um. For me, sometimes it's like um. Uh, like I mentioned briefly about uh, roller derby uh, yesterday, but um, I played roller derby for like uh, seven years, and um, I, I played like internationally for like Team West Indies, and um, it was, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, <laughs> but it it was awesome, right? And I started like with, with me and things. I, I started. I'm like, right, how far can I get? I'm going to test myself to mm. get that. I was thinking, right, World Cup. I'm, I'm going to that's where I'm going and I did it it's awesome and um, like all my all my mates that I've like skated with we're like a family now like we're, we're like that but um I I done what I needed to do with that and then I left it I still skate now like we go out for like skates and things or I go out for the occasional skate but that was sort of something I'd done and I'd left it and I was like right what's next yeah. you know I couldn't I couldn't stay on roller derby all my life you know like some skaters do like props to them but I was just like no <laughs> How much of that do you think links back to that part of you as well that recognizes like uh like you're you were saying you know within the culture within like the the battle lines organization that you started mm. and the people don't realize it's a you it's one person it's a woman it's a black woman mm. like how much of that drive do you think of you know <laughs> being the best at doing it you know getting to the finish line faster how much is related to that struggle and just you know uh, well you said it right there like it's like um you you grow up with it like me growing up um my granddad always said you know like you you, you have to work twice as hard because you're you're black mm -hmm. so you know fair enough your mates are doing all right and they're playing out and doing their homework but you have to sit here and do another like two hours <laughs> and i'm just like oh <laughs> Yeah, you have to, you know, that's it, it's that struggle, you know, it's that sort of historical pressure and the pressure that your grandparents have been through, that my mum, her brothers and sisters have been through, you get drummed into you that you have to, you know, work twice as hard. And I think I've always had that. And that's where that comes in. It's like, oh, I need to keep going, <laughs> you know, I need to be not be the best, but to show that I, I, I'm an achiever as well. And I can do this just as good as anyone else, that sort of thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in face of that what do you do to take care of yourself because that's you know mm. the fantastic that's... but it isn't always good for no you know. no it's not so um sometimes that's it i just um step back 
um, I give myself a break. I allow to give myself a break. Um, mm. You know, and that's it. You'll have people go, oh, I heard from you in ages. Like, that's cool. I've just been chilling for a month, just sitting on the sofa and watching really bad telly, <laughs> you know. Um, and um, I, that's it. I've learned to, like, give myself a break and not to keep going because once you burn out, and with all that pressure you keep on yourself, you're no good for anyone, let alone yourself. So you have to like stop and um, you know, recollect and then get back on it again, really. Um, but I am hard on myself, but I think that's just from, you know, wanting to be the best I can, not for anyone else, but for me. Yeah. But, you know, I suppose um, that, when that's put onto you from a young age, I suppose that's where you do get, like with my artwork, like, you know, that perfectionism, whether it's drawing like a really fine line and to the point where I was just driving myself mad. And if I made, made a mistake, I would like, you know, get the bit of paper, screw it up and put it in the bin. But um, I remember my art teacher at school saying like, I remember she went back over to the bin and took it out and she flattened it out for me. She said, right, you're going to finish this sort of thing. And I thought, okay, and I ended up finishing whatever piece of work it was and that's where I sort of learned to like just go straight in with my work if I'm doing a canvas or anything and I make a mistake it's cool it's fine print just go with it <laughs> and that's what most of my artwork is you know you, you see obviously you see the mistakes in it but um it, you know it's just like that, that's that's cool I, I I know where those mistakes are no one else can really see them yeah like they like that piece they think it's rad you know that's cool I, I can live with that <laughs> That reminds me of what we were talking about earlier and just that it's a lovely kind of connection to our lives and what we've been through and what we've survived. Yeah. Like the art is a reflection of that. It's the process, it's the journey that's in the piece that makes yeah. it precious, that makes it extraordinary. That's what makes it extraordinary. It's not technical prowess, it's the story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It, it's what you you want to say, and even if you're not consciously doing it, you know, there's a lot of pieces that I I do, and um, I, I've never thought about it until someone turns around and says, "Oh, that reminds me of this or that." I was like, "Oh, actually, you yeah, know, that, that that probably is that." But at the time drawing it, I was just, it's like, and what's it called with um, like a uh, in like horror films and that when they take when the the pen like take automatic. Oh, automatic writing, like just yeah, that sort of stuff. You just keep going, yeah, yeah. It's like you, it's like a meditative sort of state. You just go into a hole and you just keep drawing it out. You know, like yeah. you don't think about it. Gosh, that's <laughs> that's a lo I I love that state. I love yeah. That. yeah, that's what I mean. Like you can, yeah. And that, I give myself those like states to be in when, I, when I'm sketching. That's where I relieve the pressure on myself to do something because I just open it up and just start doodling something and just go with it, you know. Do you have that board nearby that you showed me yesterday? That gorgeous... My, sk my, my skate deck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, where did I put it? Oh, oh, it's right here. You know what? I uh, this is what I mean about like social media and that, Mary. Like you put it on there. I've got a website or anything yet, um, but still, you put it on there, and um, you think, you know, yeah, this is for sale. PM me, DM me if you want something. You don't hear anything, right? This I, I, I don't think I've even. Um, this piece has been 2017 is on this, yeah. and this is a skate. Uh, I've got a lot of friends who are like skaters as well. Yeah. So um, the, my friends who are skating, these are like their old knackered decks. So I've got about four of them. And uh, yeah, that, that was one where I started at the top here. Yeah. Um, made a mistake with some ink somewhere, painted it white, and I just kept on going. So it's just loads of hair and eyes. And um, to me, it's not finished. There's loads of, I want all those other eyes. I want all those to be like that one, basically. Yeah, like those two. Because yeah. I started to read up on um, tutorials and that with acrylic. I was like, oh, wicked. And I got it. And that's that's what I want it sort of to be like. But yeah, well, they're skate decks. As it, they're, yeah, they're for sale, but no one, no one, <laughs> no one wants them. They're just hanging about. Um, <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got loads. I've got loads. I've got another one there. With oh, like um, <laughs> like a, uh, uh, oh, uh, remains of <sighs> stuff. That's all hand drawn. That's like painted and all that filling, filling in or shading. That's all hand drawn with like ink and stuff. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that's that's it. That's 2016. 
and I, I really worked it the other well last year is 2020 there so got loads yeah just things kicking about <laughs> if folks do if folks do want to buy something from you or if they're interested in like i don't know if you have prints of your other work that you do like what should they yeah. do? um uh message me pm me okay that, that's all i can do for the moment because I, I don't have a website um uh yeah I, i'm trying to think of other pr i've got loads but yeah um most of it's on my um social media stuff like on my instagram like everything there is either a canvas a print or yeah like a, an a3 a1 drawing um if you want customs stuff let me know what you're into and then um, i can draw you up something as well you know Brilliant. um yeah i just find it quite difficult because not everyone's into my the, i think that's something you question yourself about as well not everyone's into my stuff so mm -hmm. it's like finding your clientele your group of people who will buy your prints you know and look at your limited edition work and how your work develops and things you know um yeah oh they're out there print. <laughs> yeah that's it just finding them isn't it and getting your website and things like that and, you know it's um, a, the website thing is an interesting again that that the sort of push to promote ourselves is so strong these days and especially i think during the pandemic it's become this mm. uh, yeah it's i think do what you do keep doing what you love this isn't prescriptive i think this is for anyone any one of us out there i think all mm. we can do is doing what we love doing yeah. yeah, and trust that it you know things will happen things yeah, that's the thing happen. the website i like there's been things like i have to redo the living room's website for example and it weighs on me it is one of those things i wake up in the middle of the night and go, <laughs> <"Ugh."> <laughs> um like updating and yeah right and it shouldn't be that way i don't think yeah. it needs thing that wakes me up in the middle of the night it will happen yeah. when it yeah. your artwork it's it's incredible it's beautiful yes it's dark but i wouldn't what would if it wasn't dark do i i don't know if i want you painting rainbows and puppy dogs yeah sunshine lollipops <laughs> i want to see the rainbow dripping eyeball i want to see the puppy dog <laughs> like <laughs> thanks mary that's wicked that's cool that's really nice to hear it's your, voice. It's your voice that speaks i don't want something yeah. And and the thing is as well, um, it's not about it. Like um, there's the, one of my artists that I absolutely love is uh, Richie Beckett, and um, Richie Beckett's work is absolutely like he uses like the pink pen, um, same sort of thing. I've been I've been listening to a lot of his interviews lately, and yeah. it's all about um, those mistakes um, that you make and things. Um, but his his work, for example, he he could charge through the roof for his prints, but he doesn't. They're like pff, seventy quid like 70 pounds 50 quid if you want a richard beckett piece that's the sort of artist i want to be where it's just like it, it's it's a quality piece but that's it it's still accessible to people yeah you know it's not um it's accessible you know people can buy it you know i wonder if that's also speaking back to the the kind of um again it's that you know rupture right it's your that fine arts world that has made it so difficult for people to join and yeah. so Part of there's I think when artists like you put your work out there in an affordable way and not that it always has to be you know that level of affordable no, but, but you're you're talking back to that system and mm. you're making space for new collectors new appreciators yeah. and you know to this day his artwork is still that price and he's done work for mm. major bands and things I'm just thinking that's um I was uh, back in a little uh like the other day um yesterday i was saying about um uh a local artist um heath really cool guy heath came you should check him out um i <laughs> my boyfriend um is a courier driver and him um, he collected um and he ended up going to heath kane's house and then um, he said he, st he stepped in this dude's house and he was like man like it's always hard work about why like, it's like prince got these art books like who is this guy he ended up being made, like friends with heath and uh yeah um, he's got one of my prints uh but i said to him i said as a professional artist because he's established um and i said uh you know what what is it with my artwork mate like just give me a solid thing and he goes you know what he goes um you're in this like um street art bubble what what, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, your work's like fine art. He goes, when I look at your work, I see fine art practice. He goes, you obviously studied it at some point, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah. He goes, um, go back to that. 
discipline because that's it you do find drawings and things you go he's like forget the street art element that's when you were you know younger when you do all these art jams and all that sort of thing and i was like you know what i was thinking he's absolutely right and you know i was on about my wall <laughs> that was the wall and um from speaking to him um i was like that is it i'm in this like street art cool you know everything street art's really good and you'd be a street so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that anymore <laughs> i'm not that i i, I am fine drawing you know i could do the odd like you know eyeball sticker that's cool but that's that's where i'm at that sort of work you know yeah. and that's that's what i've learned and so, I, i think it's also uh why not be both be what you want to be right now yeah yeah so, and oh. i think it's don't think street art it's not it's cool and i can do that i can do yeah. my stickers and my paste ups but i really enjoy It's listening to that voice of like whenever we feel restricted by something like for me there's a sign of whenever i'm feeling restrained to be one thing that's for me a sign of like okay what's not working here because that yeah. doesn't so if i'm only if i'm feeling like i'm being held back by one term one label one description and what i'm doing then that's when i want to break free from it and that's when i want to you know again rupture it exactly and that's what i'm that's what i'm doing so i'm concentrating on like my drawings and stuff and uh beautiful yeah that's what i'm doing that's where it's at you know i could do street art i could do a paint jam or whatever anytime i'm not really i'm not really after that kudos and that sort of oh your street art it's oh, so cool man it's like <laughs> oh, i'm not that's yeah. not me either yeah i don't want that sort of attention because i don't like you know i'm not really i want to just sink back in the back you know like um homer simpson when he goes back into the hedges it's like <laughs> that. Let's <laughs> go back. Well, letting your art speak for you. Right? Yeah. Without having to do any of the other performative stuff. But yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but I know I can do that, but um I've just realized that that's not me and um yeah, I've done loads of new stuff now that I'm really happy with actually. So, yeah, yeah. Well, perhaps like we're coming to the end of our hour here and I know. The, I feel like it's so quick. Yeah, just beginning to dive into a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh may i uh, perhaps invite you back another time to continue the conversation catch up yeah, where for sure yeah? yeah i'll be up for that mary yeah <laughs> who knows maybe some collaborations in the future with the living room yeah oh totally we've got technology right you know you can do anything now you can have battle lines in the living room studio you know that sort of thing because the artists and the people you have um coming um like in your community that they're, they're amazing absolutely brilliant everyone even on the group on the Wednesday group it, 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 yeah it's, it's just awesome creative people I'd love to come to the living room when you know it's all done you know, it's such a cool space we need something like that here um it's really hard to get that around here it's so, um, getting harder around here too but one day yeah. the pandemic will end and one day yeah. chances to connect in lots of other ways yeah. it's a great space you got for people Mary and what you're doing is is, is commendable like again you know i didn't know it was just you <laughs> well first got a board of directors it's like but for the daily yeah. mind it's pretty much yeah yeah man artists we do things yeah there's something isn't there there's something in the i don't know what it is <laughs> yeah. well, print been an absolute pleasure chatting with you any last you. any shout outs you want to give to folks anything shout outs uh, oh oh god there's so many people though that's the thing i've seen so many people in the chat like carlos x um ellie's just popped up no. uh, my mate lee's there lee's a wicked vr artist um he's killing it at the moment with like this virtual buying things online and ridiculous amounts of stuff um yeah richie's on there richie oh uh royal derby mate finn yeah trudy's on there my mate ben those people thanks everyone <laughs> my mate so sen was on there so sen um is a really cool sound therapist but yeah those people there sorry I, if i missed anyone i just scrolled for it i didn't realize there's so many people there jesus well you know what <laughs> getting to if there's folks who want to chat in the future i'd love to meet everyone i'd love to meet everyone and talk with yeah. everyone and for folks who are tuning in just now and you missed the first part it uh we uploaded <laughs> it live on instagram so you can always tune in go back to the beginning and catch up on what you missed yeah cool Thanks so much Mary. Thank you for your time and like reaching out and stuff and uh, I hope this is like a uh, more more to come from me and you. Yes, please. Yes, too yes. right. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in as well. Thanks Mary. Thank you. Do I do I end it? Do you end it? Do I just I, close I, it? I press the X if you like. That kind of thing there. Oh. Right. See ya. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh
yeah uh everyone's saying thank you to prin and yeah so much love prin's way i'm so i i feel so incredibly grateful to have met prin and i'm looking forward to connecting with more folks out there and connecting with prin one day again soon too if you missed if you missed the beginning of this and you want to go back uh, it's going to be up on our instagram in a second so just hang on in there and of course until we can connect and create with one another again in person i look forward to connecting with her right here online uh again soon next week for another artist chat with folks someone out there in the community if you're interested in chatting with me drop me a line let's do it let's continue creating community even though we can't connect in person okay love to all stay safe take care of yourselves and see you again soon bye now